Good evening traders. Thank you for checking out this video and of course you're very welcome on our channel. In this video I want to run through some of the common questions I get regularly with regards to equipment of traders data. I get a lot, I'm not, I'm not going to have time in this video to go through them all, but I want to focus on some of them, the main ones and particularly reference. I'm going to use the uh, Bitcoin's current data to actually go through it. There's a lot of really, really relevant info at the moment that we can get from the Bitcoin positions. And I want to just go through a couple of main questions that I get, how to read caught data, or who we should follow. If you're regularly looking at caught data, or if you're familiar with caught data, you know there's commercials and non-commercials, there's also non-reportables. And I'd always get asked, which should you look at, commercial or non-commercial data? And then I'll, I'll take a look at open interest as well. That's another question that I get asked. What does open interest tell us? What should you do with it? So I'm going to go through uh, those questions and try to answer those questions by using the current positions that we have in Bitcoin. Why Bitcoin? Not just because it's a market that everybody's talk talking about at the moment, but uh, because the positions themselves that we actually currently have in Bitcoin are actually showing us all the signs that you could potentially look at, all the information uh, that we could potentially pull from the equipment of traders. We're getting it all from Bitcoin at the moment, whether it be the commercials, non-commercials, open interest, non-reportables, literally movement across all, all of all areas of the data that we can actually get info from. I'm going to go through each of the sections or each of the groups and just show you how we can, re can read them and what, what the information that we're actually getting from this. So we're going to start with the commercials. If you haven't been on our platform before, we have a big list of markets where we have all the, the latest equipment of traders data for, for. I'm not going to cover all the points of the data that we break down, but by all means, jump on and take a look for yourself. I'm going to go through the main points at the moment, and I'm going to be using Bitcoin as a say for it. Looking at the commercial data to begin with, I'm just going to turn off the net position. I'm going to focus actually on, on their buying and selling activity. And we can see, particularly over this last sort of 18 months where the commercial activity has really started to build up. It's very practically non-existent prior, prior to that. So, but over this last 18 months, pretty much from the end of last summer, we started to see a lot of commercial activity come back into this, into this market. Just before we were breaking out of the, the previous highs above that 20,000, there was a lot of buying in through here. Now, typically when you look at the commercials, they're generally hedging to protect themselves against a future move. So if they are buying, it's because they expect to see that next big move in that market to move to the upside. And generally if they're selling, it's because they expect to see that next move to the market uh, to be to the downside. Um, so we've seen a lot of bullish activity here in the commercials through la last summer. We got towards the highs and they continue to be buyers if we are breaking through that 20,000, which is a really, really bullish uh, condition. They rolled off those positions as you'd expect to see as the market was moving higher. They typically won't continue to be buyers up through the highs. They generally aren't even buyers at the highs, but this is a really bullish condition. We've seen markets like crude oil, natural gas, and a, and a number of other commodities this year as well have that kind of condition. And it, it's shown the market and the belief that the commercials are hedging for that market to move to the upside. Fast forward to more recent data, you can see whenever the... Uh, they got heavily long again in the recent lows just, uh, in the summer, heavily long, cutting the shorts down again, showing the belief that they see the, the, the need to hedge that next move and that being to the, the long side. Big switch in here just when we were getting up towards the 50,000, uh, starting to sh show us their change for where they see the next potential move coming, showing, this, uh, showing us there could be weakness in that market and the shorts increasing up significantly, cutting those longs. And indeed we do see then the market ro rolling over. Uh, very, a really bullish condition as soon as we got that roll over and back down into that 40,000 area was they instantly started to cut those shorts. So they're not seeing, going, uh, expecting to see an acceleration to the downside. So they cut those shorts quite quickly and they start to be buyers again. Fast forward to where we are right now and they are buying the high again. They've got a new all time high in terms of their long contracts, the most contracts they've ever held on the long side, which is a bullish condition. But something they've never done before is they're also selling this. Is the first time they've hedged and added to both longs and shorts. And generally a really bullish condition would be for the longs to be increasing the whilst they're cutting and dropping the shorts. The fact that they are adding into the shorts here shows that they do still see some possibility of, of some negative 
impact into the market and some of a, a move to the downside. They are still happy to be long, so it does show that the, the main move is they do see the market moving higher, but there's some negativity around there which they feel the need to hedge, hedge against. Going forward, to be really bullish and to see a strong run to the end of the year, you would like to see these the buying continue as we break up through the highs, and then you'd expect it to ease off. But the key thing is you'd, you'd like to see this short contracts rolling over, showing us that the, the possibility or that they see the possibility of it move to the downside, reducing over the coming weeks. So that'll be a nice setup for a bullish continuation of this current move. So keep an eye on that. But at the moment, the data is bullish, but it could quickly turn bearish if they actually cut those longs and continue to increase those shorts. So keep a close eye on that. But being on the long side currently, you'd want to see a continuation of the longs and a drop of these shorts. Switching over now to the non-reportable, the positions we have at the bottom. Again, I'm going to focus on what's actually going on uh, in the positions by looking at the longs and the short. Now, generally, and, uh, because you can see they're all generally always net short, the 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 red line is above the green, so they're always net short. And here, we're going to focus on the short because it's their main driver. And generally, whenever you've seen, I might actually zoom in just so we get a close, good close look at it. You can see that they would build up a big short position, typically timing a with a market top. Uh, and then seeing the market moving lower and they'd cut that short position again. We see a market moving higher. They jump into the shorts and we get the peak in their shorts as the market then starts to roll over and they cut those shorts. So whenever they get less short in the market, that sets up the less selling, the market starts to move higher again, you get a peak in their shorts and the market eases off and here we move sideways. And again, they jump onto the short side and we do dip uh, just, just in through here. But see, interestingly, as soon as we the market does dip, they very, very quickly cut those shorts and the lack of selling then allows that market to move to the upside. Fast forward again to where we currently are, and we look at the more recent positions again, a lack of selling in here, so a lack of selling towards the previous lows, allowing free in the market to move to the upside, but they've got very, very heavily long in here, very, very heavily long. Now, they have done that, and it was actually pretty much la exactly last year, uh, it was all through October. Last year, they, when we were moving higher, they were adding into the shorts really significantly, adding into the shorts very quickly. They've done exactly the same thing in here, adding to the shorts very, very quickly, exactly through October. Slight difference this time is they've always had a very similar balance between their longs and the shorts, always more shorts, but the two of them followed a very similar pattern. And you'll see here whenever they were moving higher, both were moving higher and both were cut together. As we continue to move higher and they're actually leaving the market free in the market actually giving the control to the commercials that was the main side where the money was coming in the slight difference here is they've actually stopped buying they've cut their shoe they haven't cut the longs but they've actually held very stable longs and that would suggest when they have again they've never done that similar to what the commercials are doing in here They've not done that, which would suggest that they are, see more conviction in the fact that they are short and that they don't need to be buyers in here. So that would certainly indicate that they don't see a break through the, the current highs at around 68 and that the likelihood is we'll see a little bit of a dip. Now, we don't have to at all. We don't have to dip that far. Uh, we could drop into sort of the mid 55s or around the 50 area and see their shorts drop down very, very quickly as they've done in the, in the past. But yes, certainly to be a, a bull in here and to continue this move through the seasonal period through the end of the year, you'd really like to see these shorts rolling over, uh, dropping off quite quickly again, just like they've done here in the past and freeing the market to allow it to move higher. So as it stands at the moment, there is certainly from the commercials, there's negatives to the data. Uh, still short term, I would say we can move higher, but there's, it's gonna, I'd expect momentum to be limited. The best case scenario is actually we, we range in here uh, or a slight dip, allow the commercials to cut those shorts, allow the non-commercials uh, non to cut their shorts as well, and then free the market up possibly towards the latter part of November. Another aspect of the data is the non-reportables. It doesn't get much focus, generally would be seen as being wrong in the market. And the, the slight downside with the non-reportables, we don't actually know who they are. It's uh, They could be a mix of commercials, non-commercials. 
the retail generally is retail they're generally wrong they're all they're generally on the wrong side of the market or they're wrong at the tops and bottoms um but the key thing is to actually go and look at their history see what they do, see what they do and again if you look very different to the non-reportables they are generally net long you'll see their the green line up but constantly above the, the red and their shorts actually this red line is very little activity so we'll focus on what their main driver is and it's been the opposite to what the non-reportable uh, have been doing or the non-commercial have been doing sorry generally they were on the lot of the long side at the the peaks so they are the most long positions are been at the peak of the market they start to roll over as the market moves uh, lower and again as the start market starts to move higher they're at their peak in their longs at the top every time they actually ease off those longs that f again freeze up that market you don't want to see typically and that's common across all markets whenever the retail the non-reportable get heavily long or heavily short it's typically at the end of a trend it's typically the exhaustion of a trend and we need to see a retracement before continuation but you've seen when we've had consolidations in the past in in this market and around the likes of this area and they get bored the non-reportables get bored they leave the market that frees up the market again to to move higher they they jump in heavily like they did in here and again the market dips they get scared get bored pull out those longs and again free in the market to move higher very uh, typical sort of conditions and the sort of behaviors that they do and if we bring that to where we currently are there's some really negative fa uh, factors in here we did have a really low level of buying from the non-reportables which is typical at lows uh, at market bottoms which was set up this the rally through the summer really really nicely but here over this last three weeks just coinciding with the launch of the etfs a lot of hype around the market and we see a huge spike in the non-reportables jumping in here the retail crowd this is not a bullish factor this is not a bullish factor typically whenever the, these guys get really excited about something that's generally the end so it's going to be really hard in here again combining what we've seen between the commercials the non-commercials the non-reportables there are some bullish factors from the commercials and being buyers but generally the negativity between the non-reportables and the non-commercials i think suggests that bitcoin's going to struggle here for the next week or two the ideal scenarios we possibly range uh, here or say a slight dip into the mid 50s and we see the non-reportables get bored get scared and they quickly jump out on the long side if we can do that freeze the market up then to actually see a run through the latter part of november and into december but with the current positions it's going to be very hard for bitcoin to break through the highs and continue and have a big run similar to what happened when we broke the highs last year we broke up through that twenty thousand. so that's what you uh we would like to see in terms of uh, continuation of the bullish, mar um, bullish market that's how to read the current conditions um, and that's what the current conditions of Bitcoin are telling us in the last part we can look at the positions as well as looking at the open interest which is I said I get asked about a lot and I guess that's just looking at the total positions and again very similar to what the non-reportables are doing high levels of open interest are typically coincide with highs in the market and low levels of open interest typically coincide with lows increase in open interest is fine it's showing the mar uh, participants are coming into the market we see activity within the market and that's what we need to drive a trend but typically when we get to extremes and we're making new highs that's typically a top and if we just look at the, the, the history of it so you'll see the highs and in open interest will coincide with tops and the lows and open interest will coincide with lows we're right up here in an extreme and that's as i say it's not a bullish condition you would like to see that easing off so typically an exhaustion sig signal so not somewhere where you want to be going along so at the moment as i say there are negative factors to, to bitcoin it doesn't mean we turn and, uh, and collapse i think the main point is here uh, is the, the commercial buying if the commercials were not buying i would definitely be a lot worried about this market in terms of actually seeing a fairly significant correction but the fact that they are still buying and their track record that they have had through throughout the history that we've got of uh, the bitcoin futures this is still bullish but keep a, really, a close eye on this you do not want to see their longs dipping on a bit an acceleration of their shorts over the next couple of weeks so in summary for those questions hopefully that's helped just going through that scenario but in terms of looking at the data i personally think it's easier if you start with a chart look at where we are look at where the current price are, are we in an uptrend are we in a downtrend 
what is the current price and try to think of what each group should be doing how should they be positioned in terms of the ideal scenario for to be either be bullish or bearish and then combine the two um, don't assume one group should be buyers or sellers so don't assume that the commercials should all should be selling every time it goes up or buying every time it goes down etc don't assume what they they should do look at each market in its own right look at what they've uh, their history within that market uh, whether are they long at the peaks are they short at the troughs etc etc look at what they have done what is their history and compare that to what the current positions are doing that'll tell you where we are within that cycle and what their what their positions actually mean for that market in terms of which to follow we want to look at commercials and non-commercials I would always say neither group should be ignored. No part of the, da the data should be ignored. There's clues everywhere. Say Bitcoin's a fantastic uh, example at the moment because there's all uh, all parts of the data are moving. There's a lot of info coming, even just coming from the non-reportables on their own. The fact that they are so heavily long, that on its own is a really negative factor. So never ignore any part. There's certainly times, yes, when you can concentrate on one group more than the other. We typically, you would look at commercials, at trend changes at the end of a trend, the setting up of a new trend. Uh, and generally, obviously, then looking at commercials during the trending periods that they are buying into an uptrend or selling a downtrend, showing you've got that money flow coming into that market so there's times you can focus one group more than the other but i would never say to ignore any part of the group any any part of the data at all and lastly you're looking at open interest it's a really sort of high level way of looking at the commitment to traders to say uh, increasing open interest as a trend is is moving along that's a bullish continuation for an uptrend shows that there's new new fuel being added to the fire so new new money adding into to the trend that's a bullish condition but when we get to extreme levels of open interest when effectively when you see everybody all in a bit like what we're seeing in the non-reportables here at the moment when you get those traders all in then we've got exhaustion. We've got no fuel left to come in. We've got new, no new money to come, left to come in. We get exhaustion off those buyers, and that's generally coincides with a reversal. Uh, the history of Bitcoin, we haven't seen many major reversals when we've got those extremes. It's normally been short-term dips or consolidations. So we say it doesn't mean we'd have to turn around and drop to twenty thousand again, but uh, typically a high open interest it puts the brakes on a market. So that's probably the easiest way of looking at that. So there's three of the main questions that I get asked. I do get asked a lot, a lot of other questions around the COT data, but I, they would be the main ones. Uh, and certainly looking at the commercials and the non-commercials and what part of the data to look at. By all means, jump on the site, check out the data for yourself, uh, apply what I've just talked about uh, to, to any of the markets here. Uh, there's clues in all parts of the data. Bitcoin at the moment is a fantastic example of really being able to get into the data from all aspects, whether it be commercial, non-commercial and non-reportable. There's so much going on and it's something that's going to be very, very high on my list in terms of watching as we get all the data every week again. The new data will be out in a couple of days time. I'll be paying very close attention to what each group is doing. Are we seeing a, expecting a continuation or perhaps the data and the commercials particularly turns bearish? Uh, and we then anticipate a bit of a dip in here possibly or maybe we don't even see the year-end seasonal rally that so many people have been talking about uh, at the moment i still think and i'm still planning for this but uh, the likely scenario is that we've capped here for now we consolidate for a week or two and potentially then build up towards the latter part of the year i will all as always i'll be looking at the latest data on next week's webinar uh, live webinar i'll be going through all the updated data and any relevant data that comes through from this week's release so by all means jump onto that webinar next week but hopefully you find that useful guys i'll talk to you soon